Welcome to day 16 of my A4 Advent calendar. In this series of videos I show you in 24 days how to program the A4 APIP microcontroller. And today I don't have a paperback because we will still be talking about SPI. In my last video we have used SPI master mode with two um, 7.4 ICs and today I want to use the SPI interface in slave mode and show you how to write an SPI slave on this AppMaker ADAPA microcontroller. So let's go briefly about the datasheet what we have to change here. So let me navigate to the SPI section. Here it is and let's go to the register description. So here we see the SPI control register and first let's talk about bit 4 here. So in my last videos we have set bit 4 which is master slave select to 1 to select the master mode. But this time we will leave it zero to use it as a master uh, a slave mode. And this time I will also use the SPI um, interrupt. So I will set bit 7 SPI interrupt enable to 1. And if I look here at the pinout of my microcontroller, what does change if we use the SPI interface in slave mode? Well, here we have the SPI pins and in master mode, chip select, master output slave input and serial clock were output pins and master input slave output was an input pin. But now in slave mode this is the other way around. So now serial clock, master output slave input and chip select are inputs and master input slave output is an output now. Okay, so with this knowledge let's take a look at the setup and what I want to achieve today. So I want to program this at Mega Microcontroller to act as an SPI slave to control this 7 seconds display here. And I will add two um, commands. So we are able to read back the current displayed value with the command 1.1 1, 1, and with the command 2.2 2, we can write a new value to the display. But I will show you how to implement this in the source code. So let me navigate into my A4R programming um, or A4R advanced calendars folder. And as a template for today's video, I will use this seven segment display here. And our new folder should be 16 SPI slave. Okay, so now let me cd into 16 here. And let's make some adjustments to the make file. So first the frequency here is 20 megahertz. And the target name should be SPI slave here but the rest can just stay the same. Okay, and in the main file I also have to do some changes. I don't need this define here and I will declare the state and the counter as global variables and I will rename the counter to display. And the reason why I'm declaring this as global variables is I need to access these variables from my interrupt service routine. As I will use interrupts, I have to include a4r slash interrupt.h. And here I have to change some things too. So let me delete these lines here and everything here in the endless loop. Okay, so let's first let's init the IOs for the display. And you can see here I have connected the display mostly to the parts of or to part C. And this for bit 7 um, or segment 7 I will use port B pin 1 here. Okay, so let me, so I will set all the pins of port C to, or these first 6 pins of port C to output. And on port B I will set 1 shifted by PB1 to an output as well. Okay, and then I will also set or I will init the pins for SBI and this is quite simple here all I have to do is I only have to set um, the master input slave output pin to an output and this is PB4 so here I can just write one I or the data direction register of port B with one shifted by PB4 and now let's init the SPI IP. Therefore I have to write to the SPI control register and here I will just enable the SPI interrupts and then in a second access I will enable the SPI interface. 
And as I want to use interrupts, I have to globally enable the interrupts with, say, here. Okay, and down here all I will do is I will set the output data register of part C to the desired value. And I've stored the segment value for each value to display here in this array. So let's do this display and I will end it with 15 because I can only display one um, byte at, because I only have one segment display and I will end it with 3F so I will only control the first um, six pins. Then I will um, write to the port B data register. First I will clear um, the oh, PB1 which is connected to segment F and then if, um, let me copy this, or in case this here and one shifted by six is bigger than zero, I will set the bit again. Okay, so this is all for the main function. Now let's implement the interrupt service routine. So here in the interrupt service routine, I need the SPI STC vector here for, because this is a vector which is called when um, the um, receive complete flag is set. And the first thing I will do is I will, let's define some commands here. I will define get, which is 11 hexadecimal. I will define set, which is 22 decimal, and I will um, define idle, which is zero. On default, our state is idle. And now depending on the current state, I will yeah, do something here in my interrupt service routine. In case the state is idle, our controller is ready to take a new command. And the new state is um, the content which is which was transferred from the SBI master to the SBI data register of our slave here. And then we can do a break. Or no, no break yet. We will do a second switch. Again, the new state in case the command is um, get here. In this case, I have to write our display variable into the SPI data register so it will be transmitted from our slave by the next access of the master. And then I can do a break here. In case the command is set, we don't have to do anything. And by default, I will set the state to idle because default is called when the command is not get or set. I will set the state back to idle and I will break here. Okay, so this was the idle case. Let's use the get case. So in the case the command is get, we have already written the um, value, the display value into the data register. So all we have to do is we have to set the state to idle again and then we can break. In case um, the command was set, we will um, update our display variable with um, the content of the SPI data register, so with the last transferred um, value from the SPI master, and I will end it with um, 15 because we can only display the values from 0 to 15 here. Then I will set the state to idle again and I will break. And the same is true for default, so if an invalid command is here, but I should never get into this case here. Okay, so that should be it. Let me try to compile the program. Compiling worked. Now let's flash it. Okay, this looks good. Okay, we have flashed the program. Our seven segment display shows a zero, so it seems everything is working fine. Okay, so that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something, and I hope I will see you tomorrow. Bye!